A 71 to 61 win for Marquette against Miami in the East region. Now number one and number two has gone down. We've read Forgrave on the line once again, even though you guys love to hate, it seems like having Fox Sports and TYT on the same platform. So you know what? Forget about you. Marquette uh, Reed has, has really, uh, it was very surprising to me personally, a 71-61 win over Miami. I think everyone, obviously the betting favorites had Miami, but Marquette, I mean, Vander Blue only had 14 points in this game going 7-12 from the field. What did you see with Marquette that impressed you the most in them getting this win? It wasn't as much of a surprise uh, as you might think uh, for, for two reasons. One is, Reggie Johnson uh, was out for the game. He, he, people were people were saying, okay, he, he, statistically he hasn't contributed that much. He didn't have an especially good year for Miami. They had plenty of other depth and big men. But you're forgetting, you're talking about a six foot ten, three hundred pound guy. This was the perfect Marquette basketball game. It was ugly. He dominated them, and it was only a, a ten point win, but it, it felt like a twenty five point win. The game felt like it was over by half. So was it Miami's offense that simply couldn't get, in, get it going? I know they shot in the 30s. I mean, Shane Larkin put up 14-4-4. Four, and four. Uh, I don't know what exactly you would expect of him. Maybe a lot of Hurricanes fans were expecting a 20-point, 8-assist game from him. I mean, did they zone in on Larkin? Did they show that they are a tough team to beat defensively? Larkin had 14 points, but a lot of that was in garbage time. Uh, they were, I, I think Miami shot up like... 21% in the first half. They scored, I think, 16 points in the first half. Um, what well, not that they did, that, that, that Coach Larinaga said after the game, is apparently Shane Larkin had, had been ill the night before. He hadn't eaten all day until the you know, pregame meal. Miami, where nothing was going right. Um, they, they, it's not like they were getting too many bad shots, uh, but it just wasn't going in. There was lit on the rim for them. Um, Cap said, he kind of gave a ton of credit to Marquette because they were just hitting the glass, they were making their shots, they were playing just a, bit, a very solid, unsexy, unspectacular <laughs> winning style of basketball. Jamie Wilson and Devontae Gardner off the bench combined for 30 points as well, so that certainly gave them a boost. Now, I'm not sure many people had this, but Marquette and Syracuse for the Final Four, the only person I know that had it. Uh, didn't have those two teams, but had Syracuse beating Indiana. The only notable person that I am aware of uh, is Jay Williams of ESPN. He predicted that Syracuse would beat Indiana. Uh, Syracuse looked good, man. Their 2-3 zone looked you, good. They, they are a lengthy and strong team, Reed. I think that just goes to show two things. Uh, one is how much of this bracket picking is luck. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone would have thought Indiana would have lost that early. It, it, and two, it's it's all about timing. When do you when do you get hot at the right time? Uh, Syracuse they bumbled through the last few weeks of the regular season, and then hot at the uh, Big East tournament. They were the they played. They, they were really impressive out there. And uh, I tell you what, last last night uh, that team was on. They're they're, they're like they're long, they're athletic. They close the gaps. Uh, that two three defense. If you haven't seen it before, it was really puddling. Uh, they, they have what it takes. It's a, did not be saying this uh, after seeing that team in February that they'd be this good at March. And Michael Carter Williams was spectacular last night as well. I think the matchups defensively for Indiana killed them. I, I do think Michael Carter Williams kind of played out of his mind. He's not normally anywhere near that good of a shooter. He's more of a penetrator uh, and passer. But uh, he, I think he really showed the NBA scouts something last night uh, that he's. Uh, I mean, he, I would like to think that he probably shot up the draft board uh, with that performance last night. Absolutely. I mean, last night he looked like a top 10 at, 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 at worst top 12 pick if he were to enter yeah. the draft this year. Because you know what? With that size at point guard, man, that's a lot of size. And that could really hurt a lot of NBA teams defensively. So let me ask you this, Reed, before we let you go. Syracuse and Marquette, a battle of the Big East for a spot in the Final Four out of the East region um, I'm not going to ask you to give me a prediction because I think we've all come to the conclusion that predictions are just for idiots and you, it, it's a high risk, low reward. So I'm not going to ask you about a certain prediction, but I mean, what do you make about the game? I know you're going to take it in in D.C. What do you think? I think it'll be boring. 
I got to be honest. I think it'll be a boring game. I think uh, that, that that Marquette came off night. Uh, perhaps it was because I had a little bit too much of the uh, pregame barbecue meal, but I was was kind of snoozing in the first half. Just like, oh my gosh, this is this is not the type of exciting basketball. It'll be brutal. It'll be boring. Um, it'll be close. Uh, which, when it's close, that means uh, the boring style of basketball doesn't matter as long as you get a game the last uh, five minutes. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really tight match up there. I really like also how Marquette is this team. They're a three seed. Many people thought that they were overseeded. When you talk about overseeded and underseeded, Oregon's underseeded. Uh, Marquette is overseeded. A lot of people did not have faith in Marquette. I know I for one had Marquette losing to Butler. So it seems like this team has really overcome a lot. They face Syracuse on Saturday in Washington, D.C. Reed Forgrave will be there uh, as well, and we'll check in with him. So, Reed, thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it, and enjoy the game.